Everyone on this planet is going to face a very big problem in the coming years. A phenomenon is emerging from the heart of the Pacific, an uninvited guest that disrupts the rhythm of the seasons, turns weather patterns into chaos, and impacts life in ways we could hardly imagine. Its name? El Nino. El Nino is a climate pattern characterized by unusual warming of the surface waters in the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. The name El Nino is a Spanish term that means the boy child, often used to refer to Jesus Christ. The phenomenon was named this way because it was frequently noticed around Christmas time by fishermen off the coast of South America. This events occur every two to seven years and typically last about a year. They can significantly impact weather patterns around the globe, leading to intense storms in some places and droughts in others. This warming can also affect marine life and bird populations, which in turn can influence the fishing industry. It is not that this phenomenon is happening for the first time. The last time we have seen El Nino in 2016, which triggered extreme weather worldwide. It led to severe droughts in Africa, causing food shortages, while intense rainfall in South America resulted in devastating floods. This event highlighted El Nino's significant impact on global climate and human livelihoods. We are seeing this that this year in 2023 is one of the hottest year in the recent years worldwide, and it is likely that a sweltering 2024 will exceed it, precisely because of El Nino's influence. Perhaps one of the most infamous instances occurred in 1789-93, to now referred to as the Great El Nino. This event resulted in extensive global climate anomalies and had a significant effect on human history. Extreme rainfall and flooding in India contributed to the outbreak of a cholera epidemic, which later spread worldwide. Similarly, in Peru and Ecuador, intense rains and floods dramatically impacted the populations, causing significant loss of life and property. In the 20th century, the 1982-83 El Nino event was one of the strongest of the century and caused severe weather-related disasters worldwide. It resulted in intense storms along the western coast of South America, severe drought in the western Pacific, and devastating bushfires in Australia. Moreover, the 1997-98 El Nino was equally destructive, causing severe floods and landslides in California, fires in Indonesia, and devastating weather-related conditions in many other parts of the world. During El Nino years, mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and dengue fever have been seen to increase in regions such as South Asia and South America due to warmer and wetter conditions. The agricultural sector has also been frequently hit. Droughts associated with El Nino events have led to failed crops, food shortages, and, in extreme cases, famine. To understand El Nino, we must first comprehend the normal conditions of the Pacific Ocean, the world's largest sea. The Pacific Ocean is bordered on the east by the continents of North and South America, and on the west by the massive continent of Asia and Australia. Under regular circumstances, warm water flows along the coast of Peru in South America. The trade winds of the Pacific, which blow from east to west, push this warm water towards Australia and the coastal regions of Asia. As this warm water arrives, the temperature rises along the Australian and Asian coasts. The interplay between temperature and atmospheric pressure is significant here. High pressure zones often correlate with lower temperatures, while low pressure zones correlate with higher temperatures. This means when the warm water departs from Peru, cold water rises to the surface near the Peruvian coast in a process known as upwelling. This nutrient-rich water ascends from the seafloor, attracting large schools of fish which benefits the fishermen of Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. The Humboldt Current, a current flowing along the coasts of Peru and Chile, is the primary reason for this upwelling. This current brings cold ocean water to the surface. When this cold water reaches Peru's coastal areas, the temperature drops, creating a high pressure zone. Winds, carrying a significant amount of moisture due to evaporation, flow from this high-pressure zone over the Pacific towards the low-pressure zones of the Asian and Australian subcontinent. Upon reaching these regions, the moisture-laden winds cause rainfall. However, during an El Nino event, this entire cycle is disrupted. The trade winds, usually flowing from Peru towards Australia and Asia, weaken due to changes in pressure gradients. As a result, the transfer of warm water is disrupted, leading to a rise in temperature along the Peruvian coast, thus creating a low-pressure zone there. 
Conversely, with warm water not reaching Australia and Asia, temperatures decrease in these regions, resulting in high-pressure zones. In essence, during El Niño, this whole cycle reverses. Winds, previously flowing from Peru to Australia and Asia, now blow in the opposite direction, from Australia to Peru. These winds, laden with moisture, bring heavy rainfall to the coasts of North and South America, causing flooding, landslides, and soil erosion in Peru and Chile. Additionally, the increase in sea surface temperature during an El Niño can have substantial effects on marine life. The rise in temperature causes a decrease in nutrient-rich cold water, which affects the growth of phytoplankton, the base of the oceanic food chain. As a result, fish populations can decrease, impacting birds and other animals that depend on these fish for food, as well as human communities that rely on fishing. On the flip side, with decreased moisture reaching the Asian and Australian subcontinents, these regions experience drought conditions. This cycle, combined with its reverse phase, known as La Niña, is referred to as the El Niño Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. This complex interaction between the ocean and the atmosphere has profound implications for global weather patterns, affecting not just rainfall, but also influencing natural disasters, agriculture, and even the economies of affected regions. El Niño events also contribute to higher global temperatures. The release of vast amounts of heat from the Pacific Ocean into the atmosphere can make El Niño years some of the warmest on record. This exacerbates the ongoing issue of global warming, potentially accelerating the impacts of climate change. Moreover, the health impacts of El Niño can be severe. The warmer, wetter conditions can lead to the proliferation of disease vectors like mosquitoes, increasing the spread of diseases such as malaria and dengue fever. Drought conditions, on the other hand, can lead to water shortages, malnutrition, and related health problems. Additionally, El Niño can intensify fire seasons, especially in regions experiencing drought. Dry conditions coupled with high temperatures create perfect circumstances for wildfires, which can devastate vast areas, causing loss of life, property, and biodiversity. The El Niño event of 2015 to 2016 was one of the strongest on record. Its impacts were significant and widespread, affecting many parts of the globe. In terms of weather-related disasters, the 2015 to 2016 El Niño had considerable impacts. In the Pacific, it was associated with one of the worst droughts in decades, impacting countries like Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands. This led to severe food and water shortages. In Africa, the effects were just as devastating. Ethiopia experienced its worst drought in 50 years, leaving millions in need of emergency food aid. Southern Africa also suffered from drought, leading to food shortages and water scarcity in countries like South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. On the flip side, parts of East Africa, such as Kenya and Somalia, experienced increased rainfall leading to floods. In Asia, countries like Vietnam, Philippines, and Thailand experienced severe drought conditions which impacted agricultural production significantly. In contrast, parts of South America saw increased rainfalls, leading to catastrophic floods. For example, in Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Brazil, heavy rains resulted in widespread flooding, leading to the displacement of over 150,000 people. The 2015 to 2016 El Niño event also contributed to the global record-breaking heat of 2016, making it the hottest year on record at that time. This event also exacerbated the ongoing global coral bleaching event, causing severe damage to coral reefs worldwide, including the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The El Niño of 2015 to 2016 was a clear demonstration of how a major climatic event could create significant disruption across the globe, impacting weather patterns, agriculture, and livelihoods. It highlighted the urgent need for improved forecasting and preparedness for these events particularly in regions that are most vulnerable to their impacts. Predicting and monitoring El Niño events, one of the most influential phenomena in global climate, is a complex process that requires precise data collection and advanced analysis techniques. The primary tools scientists use for these tasks include satellites, ocean buoys, and sophisticated data models, the role of satellites in monitoring and predicting El Niño events is vital. These high-tech devices, orbiting our planet, capture a broad range of data on the Earth's oceans, 
including sea surface temperatures, sea level, wind patterns, and rainfall. By analyzing this data, scientists can identify the initial signs of an El Niño event. For instance, increasing sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific can indicate an upcoming El Niño. Satellites also allow scientists to monitor the progress of an El Niño event as it unfolds, providing a global perspective that would be impossible to achieve otherwise. Another crucial component of El Niño prediction and monitoring is a network of floating buoys known as the Tropical Atmosphere Ocean or TAO array. This array, which consists of approximately 70 buoys spread across the Pacific Ocean, collects critical real-time data on temperature, wind speed and direction, and humidity at various depths in the ocean. This data, when combined with satellite observations, offers an incredibly detailed view of the conditions in the Pacific and can help scientists detect an El Niño event well before it begins. For example, one of the early signs of an impending El Niño is a phenomenon known as a Kelvin wave. This is a large mass of warm water that moves eastward beneath the ocean's surface. The Tao array of buoys can detect these waves, giving scientists a valuable early warning sign of an El Niño event. But collecting data is just one part of the equation. To make accurate predictions, this data needs to be interpreted correctly. This is where data modeling comes in. Scientists use complex computer models that simulate the interactions between the ocean and atmosphere, known as general circulation models. These models use equations based on the laws of physics to simulate the climate system and its variations. Data from satellites and buoys is fed into these models to provide initial conditions. The models then simulate how these conditions might change over time. By running these models and comparing the results to historical El Niño events, scientists can make predictions about when and how an El Niño event might occur. However, it's essential to note that despite the advanced technology and sophisticated models available, predicting El Niño events remains a challenging task. These are highly complex natural phenomena, and the exact timing and intensity of an El Niño event can be influenced by a variety of factors, some of which are still not fully understood. For example, while scientists can often predict an El Niño event several months in advance, predicting the severity of the resulting weather changes is still a significant challenge. Despite these challenges, the ongoing work of scientists worldwide, combined with continuous advancements in technology, continues to improve our understanding of El Niño events. Better understanding leads to better predictions, which in turn can help societies prepare for the impacts of these powerful climatic events. By leveraging the power of satellites, buoys, and data modeling, scientists are enhancing our ability to anticipate and respond to the challenges posed by El Niño. Although predicting the exact timing and intensity of these events remains a challenge, advances in technology and our understanding of these phenomena continue to progress. As our knowledge deepens, it offers a beacon of hope, helping us mitigate the impacts of such powerful climatic events and making our world more resilient in the face of climate change. Thank you for watching.